Hey everyone, it's Miss Douglas here with the Medieval History STEM Lab. The Inca Empire was a large empire in South America that spanned from Ecuador all the way through Chile. It was so large that travel and communication were extremely difficult. The Inca had to set up a vast network of roads and train foot messengers called chasqui to deliver messages read on quipu, an Incan record keeping system using knots in string. There was one major problem. The Incan empire was situated throughout the Andes mountains. Rough terrain, cliffs, and canyons made travel even more difficult. So the Inca designed simple rope suspension bridges made out of grass to help cross over rivers and gorges. These bridges were said to be so strong that they could hold several columns of people at the same time. But they did look pretty intimidating because they would sway in the breeze. There are still festivals in South America today honoring this ancestry where they make suspension bridges out of grass using Incan techniques. Tourists who visit have the opportunity to try crossing one of these bridges. I don't know about you, but I don't think I could do it because I'm pretty scared of heights. Today, we are going to make simple rope suspension bridges using three materials you probably have around the house. The first is a shoe box or a shipping box. I cut the front off of mine so you could see exactly what I was doing. The second thing you will need is yarn or string. And the third thing you will need is scissors. Let's get started. The first step is to prep your box. You're going to look at the short edges and you are going to end up poking four holes on each side. The first two are gonna be on the top of the box about an inch to two inches apart. And the second two holes are gonna be about an inch below the first holes. Think of this as the top and the bottom of your bridge. So you do that on one side and then you move to the other. Okay, so you can see my box is prepped. I have four holes on this short edge and four holes on the other. I did not measure. It probably would have been helpful to be accurate and make sure that they lined up. So we will see how this goes. Your next step is to grab your string and you are gonna create the tops and the bottoms of your rope bridge. You're gonna cut four lengths of string that go across the entire box, plus some additional length to be able to tie knots. You're basically going to connect each hole with the one that's directly across from it. I hope you guys poked better holes than I did as well because I am really struggling to get this rope through. So it should roughly look like this. As you can see, my holes were not even as I suspected, but it'll still do the job. All right, step three, we're gonna want to take our bottom strings and connect them, basically making the foot of the bridge that people would walk on. So I'm literally going to take string and I think I'm just gonna weave it through, um, creating the footbed. I'll tie the first edge and I'll tie the last edge. I don't know how much string I'm gonna need, so I'm going to improvise. Okay, I am back. It took a while and it's not perfect, but it looks like this. So I have the bottom of the bridge. It does seem to hold a pretty good amount of weight, but I think what's gonna be helpful is connecting the top guardrails to the bottom foothold. Um, you can do this by just tying individual pieces of string. I remember in some class learning that triangles are stronger, so I'm going to try wrapping my string along the top and the bottom, weaving it to make triangles. We'll see how it goes. Okay, 
So I have one side done. As you can see, I made some triangles as the connectors on the bridge. I'm gonna go do the other side. All right, so this is my finished bridge. Um, you can see that I have handrails on both sides now. So now it's time to test it and see how much weight it can hold. You can test with coins. You can test with really anything that has weight in your house. I'm gonna use cans of soup. So we're gonna see if it holds one can. Okay, it's bowing, but it doesn't break and it's not touching the ground so, of the box. So that's awesome. Um, I don't think it can hold two. So I don't know that I want to test that. Well, almost, basically, it's still not touching. So mine holds about two soup cans. I cannot wait to see how much weight yours can hold. Um, if you really wanna challenge yourself, you can try creating a bridge between like chairs in the house, something larger. Um, I will admit that this took some time, so I would recommend doing it on a smaller scale, but I always like a challenge. Have fun. Bye.